Okay, so I have a list of ideas that I want to talk about. Um, but because I'm wearing something very like casual. Ooh, this is very interesting. So I'm currently wearing a Canadian t-shirt. So that's the Montreal hockey team. And what's a hockey? What's hockey? Hockey is a sport. And who plays sports? Players. And what do players have most of the time? Tattoos. And today we're going to talk tattoos and IP protection when it comes to players. That was a very, 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 very weird way to make an intro. And I'm sorry for that. Okay, so this came from this. I'm, I'm this one. I'm just freestyling from what I can remember from this essay. I don't want to pull up the essay again. This gave me it traumatized me. I forgot. This essay was about the privacy rights, the U.S., Europe, whatever. And I came up this. I came across this article talking about this case in the U.S. where the players were seeking protection for their tattoos because in this new era of technology and video games a lot of video games such as fifa and then like the basketball nba video games what they're trying to do is they're trying to recreate those environments so for example you're in this like a football match or soccer whatever you say um and then you're using i don't know you're playing with Messi against Ronaldo. So you're really tr you're you're playing those real life players, if you know what I mean, but in a video game. The issue with this case was that because they have tattoos, do we get protection from this? We as the basketball players. And there were three elements. De minimis, you have implied license and fair use. Okay, so spoiler alert, the game developer won against the basketball players. And this is the reason why. The first point was the me nimis element, which basically just says that like if there is a substantial similarity, it might affect. It's whether or not is it is similar. There is there's a similarity element. Here's the thing. First of all, when you're an NBA player, you have this. There is a contract about whether they can use your your name, your likeness, your identity to do the video game because the the goal of those type of video games is to recreate uh an accurate environment of a, a, like a basketball match or a soccer match whatever it, the the match is the sport is so obviously when they're going to copy you they're going to recreate your tattoos but here's the thing and they have the numbers the the data that they have on the tattoo compared to the whole data of the video game is minimal it's so tiny skinny that it literally does, it, there's no impact on the copyright thing. But you could be like, because it doesn't make an impact, why don't you make, why don't you have the tattoos removed? But here's the thing, if you're gonna recreate something accurately, you're gonna have to recreate everything accurately, including the tattoos. You know what I mean? So already that first claim failed. <laughs> then the implied license, which is the relationship with the tattoo artist, the mb the mb player who has the tattoo and the video games so obviously when you are a tattoo wait let me just because the tattoo artists themselves knew that the tattoos would be publicly displayed on their famous clients because the tattoo artists know that their clients are celebrities they have they have implied a non-exclusive license to the NBA players to use their tattoos as part of their own likeness. This implied license was transferred from the players to the NBA, which then licensed the players' likeness, including the implied likeness to depict the tattoos to the defendants. Because the defendants had an implied license to use tattoos in NBA 2K, the court held that the game developers copyright infringement failed for this reason as well. This actually raised two questions. Who Okay, now it says that the NBA owns your likeness, which is actually a bit scary, because where does that, where does that likeness end, if you know what I mean? Because when you are a, well, let's say the NBA player, they're gonna use you as a NBA player, like they use your likeness as an NBA player, but because 
now with social media, you're not only uh, like a movie star or movie store, a movie star or a singer or a, a famous athlete, you are also some type of influencers, influencer when it comes to social media. So you might promote, I don't know, hot sauce or a scammy financial app. I'll to, like literally it could be anything. It could be anything. So where does that likeness end? And where where does the MB draw the line on your likeness? Because yes, they do own. So then wait again, are you when you're at this might be a really dumb question coming from me, but are you technically when you're an NBA player, are you an employee of the NBA? Or you are uh like I don't want to say freelance, but you are doing a contract with the NBA, but you're still your own person. Like you're a free agent doing a business with the NBA. Because regarding on that, the outcome might be different. Depending on for different reasons. I don't know how to explain this, but when you're a free agent doing business with someone else, I want to say that, uh, how can I say this? There may be, you may have some control on your image or how they sell your image, I want to say. Whereas if you're an employee, it's very much the employer who has the whole power over, if you know what I mean. This is a bit, like, this could be a discussion, right? I might be wrong. And then the second, the second question that I had was, because you are because it's the tattoo artist that does the tattoo but it's your body that the tattoo is being displayed on who owns okay actually i cannot answer myself because okay never mind i'll just tell you the answer the tattoo owns oh actually they don't own it actually they do because you own they own the design like they did the design so it's their work of art so they could be protected by copyright. But then again, you are you own that body. So but it wouldn't be copyright infringement. Like it wouldn't be copyright protection. Huh. Could it be trademark? No. Oh shit, that's actually very interesting. Huh. Because copyright is the protection of a work, of an art, work, book, novel, movie, photograph. So the design, when you are like you the target like if you are a tattoo artist and you are doing tattoo you own that art like you did this you did the art right but the person who has a tattoo on their part on the body parts what kind of protection do you have at this point i think it would be trademark but then again trademark is difficult because trademark is a sign that that is meant to distinguish your sign from someone else's sign which is a whole other thing <laughs> what rights do you have as someone who owns the tattoo that's what the thing is and also there's a limit with copyright that said and i don't want to go google it and but when something is um removable or not permanent it cannot be protected by copyright so people who get the tattoo removed you see you see the connect you see the the stuff that goes through my mind um you can discuss on this if you know or if you don't know if you have an idea and 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 have a third question just regarding implied license and tattoos cultural tattoos and the whole cultural appropriation and how cultural uh, elements can be protected from ip the first thing that came into my mind was when um kim kardashian tried to trademark kimono the word kimono for her brand but the Japanese um, government told her not to advise her not to use it. Kimonos are a very, a very uh, prominent element to the Japanese culture. How would you trademark this? Because it has been there for centuries. I see. This is the thing I don't know. And when I say tattoos, um, so we have Maori, we have other indigenous tattoos, uh, cultural tattoos. Who only? It's not like you could protect like a certain cultural thing now, now i'm going really like i'm stretching it a bit but people who are um, very protective of braids and black hairstyles would you could you be able to protect that you, do you see what i mean at this point this is very very difficult but then again the western legislations have been very lazy when it comes to protecting small 
and cultural marginal communities and their own works so it's gonna take a while before we get a solution to that <laughs> situation but yeah the implied license claim was rejected by the court and then fair use okay so there were four elements for the fair use so the purpose and characters of the use including whether such use is commercial nature or for a non-profit educational purpose the nature of the copyrighted work the amount of substantial substantiality you can see that English is not our first language of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole and the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work in short, like I said, the aim of the game is to recreate a uh, accurate NBA game so from the stadium to the chairs to the players and therefore the tattoos the data that was used on the title is so tiny skinny ridiculous minuscule compared to the whole data on the game it's so tiny that like at this point why do you care why do you care so yeah literally the transformative purpose of creating a realistic game experience obviously the game developers won the case um and it just makes sense but i have a thing i have a uh, this this whole case made me think of something because tattoo is an I don't know say an art but some, you know a cat a simple cat or your son's name okay but for some people who decide to tattoo Doritos or Domino's or just a brand's name or like the logo would be like if Domino's were to sue the game developers because it's their name attached to it or like Starbucks if Starbucks was tattooed on your arm and you're an NBA player and there's a Starbucks thing I think I think realistically they would settle the case but if it were to go to court let's use the three the three things first of all is with the minimis so the fact is there a, like a significant similarity Tattoos are very small. Like the the data on the small on the tattoo is very is very very small compared to the whole universe of video games, so that would fail. Now the implied lines. Here's the thing. Oh, okay, okay, I'm really getting excited. Okay, so when you're a tattoo and you know that you're tattooing a famous NBA, you you know like there, like they said there's this implied license that it's not exclusive, so. You just know that your tattoo is going to be on the video game but that's for example if you have i don't know brendan written like that's not you cannot copyright a name but when you are a tattoo artist and you decide to tattoo a brand or a logo on someone else's body parts this is technically i don't say copyright it's technically trademark it it's just some type of ip infringement literally because for example let's say for example you like the nike shirts but you cannot pay for them so for example you would do like the check sign on your own t-shirts that's fine because you're not selling those products the moment you are selling those products it counts out as a counterfeit so you like let's say you are the the tattoo artist oh my god i'm literally coming from so many businesses i'm so sorry this is just a discussion <laughs> Fuck! I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna snitch. I'm not snitching. Oh my god! I'm so sorry. <gasps> Am I snitching? No. I'm so sorry. Okay. Let's say. Let's say hypothetically, this is in a in a dystopia. Someone, <laughs> a tattoo artist, decides to tattoo the Domino's or the Starbucks logo on someone else's body parts, and you pay for that. Well, then again, you're not thinking of, hey, I'm a I'm a Starbucks product. So actually, this is not even a counterfeit. But I feel like this is some type of infringement because you're using a trademark, a registered sign, and you're... I don't know. I feel like... Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to snitch. I'm not a snitch. I'm so sorry, guys. So I feel like this is, very, this is a very tricky area. And then when it comes to the fair use, I think the fair use would fail? Hmm. Actually... I, th I don't think it would matter that much. I think the really, the really, like the the element that would be really difficult is would be the implied license. But then the fair use, fudge. 
I, this is why I think they would settle in real life. If this was an actual case, they would settle. There was this one case in Illinois where the, the tattoo artist won the case. So this just shows you that depending on the states, different outcomes will happen. And that's what that's why um, it's not I won't say it's not good, but just when you have different legislations depending on the states and when there's that lack of harmony, it just shows you the inconsistency. What did we learn? We learned that tattoo the people with the, who have the tattoos don't even own their own tattoos. And that I want to say that if you count of being a, a, a famous athlete and you want your face on <laughs> Your a video game, you might be a bit more careful as to what tattoos you want on your body. I don't know. I mean, that would also, I would also recommend this for anyone who wants to have a tattoo. But I don't know. Yeah, this was a very freestyle video, and I hope you like it. Bye.